We always hear growing up uh, about guys underneath the, the pile and, you know, what might, there might be some nasty stuff going on. Were you ever, I mean, you always had a little extra with every tackle. I don't know what that was about. We'll show some clips of this in a minute, but were you ever that guy where you grabbed a piece of flesh or, or something and twisted it on uh, the opposing is, team? Is, is this been taped? No, 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 it's no, not. no, no. So, it's, you know, what? it was, you would have, you know, especially in the NFL, uh, linemen, you know, and, and talking trash, you know, um, and in my way, okay, you know, so I, I've, I've snatched a couple of face masks and, you know, I dug in a couple of eyeballs, somebody that deserved it. You know, mm -hmm. never, never, never was cheap. You decided, you, know, just you decided that. they deserved it. Yeah, you deserved it, you know, so, um, you know, it was, you know, a couple, you know, hand on the throat, you know, <laughs> you know um, so one, one of the, one of the, one of the games I clearly happened was Hall of Famer Eric Dixon. So Eric Dixon, he's, he's at that time, he's playing for the Indianapolis Colts, um, playing for the Bengals. And, uh, you know, with Eric, uh, <clears throat> Eric was kind of, you know, prima donna kind of guy. You know, I'm Eric, Dave, uh, Eric Dickerson, you know, talk me, but get off of me, right? So. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know. So yeah. Every, every, Right. So What's happening? We're, we're, that means get off of me. You know, <laughs> bring me down and you know, you know. So you, you don't. So so here we're first half, and I am. Every time you know he's trying to get up, and I'm you know holding him down. He's like get up, and, you know, and I'm saying, you Eric, you get up when I let you get up. You know, so he's trying to push me, and I push his face down. You know, so it, it was it's on. You know, so he runs my way. You know, I'm I'm the ground, and I'm now I'm purposely trying to push his face and hold him down. You get up when I say get up. <laughs> you know, so Fulcher and them is on that side. So my team is please, Joe, leave him alone. <laughs> you know, and I'm saying stop being a pussy. <laughs> you know, Eric. You know, things I'm get run. I'm give him the ball again. I'm gonna get him. <laughs> you know, so this first half. So he's he's pissed. I don't know. He had, I don't know. I don't know. 40, 40 some yards first half. He ended up the game with 211, <laughs> something like that. He didn't get it against me. You know? right. So those guys like, Joe, you know, Thanks, if you would have shut up, man, he wouldn't have did that to us. You know, but he was just, you know, he was one of those guys that I, I love playing against him. You know, you know, I mean, he is the greatest. Who is the most life. influential coach in your career? In pros? Anywhere. Little League to pros. Um, uh, I had, a, I had my high school coach, uh, uh, Coach Littlefield, Coach Arbuckle, and then, you know, DJ and Lambo. Uh, NFL was, you know, I, I, I would say, you know, Sam, I liked, you know, Sam, you know, White, but still, I, I, didn't, I didn't have an NFL. Sam who? Sam White. So the, it was the, the head coach for Cincinnati, Sam. okay. Um, I liked our, our chill, and I, I, I love playing uh, for cut, Coach uh, Chuck Knox. Sounds like a lot of them. Yeah, but it wasn't, it wasn't. When were you with Knox? Uh, in 90, with the Rams, you know, I went from the Raiders, uh, uh to, the, uh, 93 and went to the Rams in 94. It was Chuck's, uh, last year. And that's when, uh, so that's when I really got to know Chuck. Um, that was, that was the last year of coaching. We were, uh, going around, uh, uh, Los Angeles there with the Save the Ram campaign. campaign. Mm -hmm. So his thing was if the Rams had stayed in LA, he would r remain the coach, uh, but if they sold, you know, he was retired and that's what he did. What did you, you know? like about him? He was just, he was just, he was a player's coach. Um, uh, you know, as long as you went and you, you know, you, you practice hard, you knew what you were going to do. Um, uh, but I, I probably liked him the most because that's when I started drinking whiskey. So, you know, <laughs> coach and I used to, because I, I, I was drinking Hennessy and we were at the bar and I ordered some, um, I don't know, some Hennessy and he's like, and I, I don't think he, he, I think he originally gave me some scotch, some McAllen or something like that. And I was like, oh, wow, this is good. You know, and I, I, I hadn't drunk cognac since. I've been drinking whiskey since. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, you, you look like you've lost a lot of weight. Yeah, you know, I, you know, it's just, like I said, we just kind of talk, man. I just kind of, now I'm just kind of been on a, a mission to, you know, to, to get healthier. Um, and knowing, you know, the condition of my, my, my spine and my lower back, um, I'm even just losing weight, just how uh, much more relief on my lower back, 
Um, so, you know, my goal is, I, you know, I've always kind of throughout, okay, I, I need to lose 30, 45 pounds. And then, you know, I lose 10 and then, and, you well, know, to kind of go through the motions. So now it's just kind of like, now just adapting this, this lifestyle and stuff I eat, you know, um, intermittent fasting and things like that. But I'm, my body's kind of used to it now, you know. Um, so, you know, just on a, you know, mission, man. To, you know, I want to I wanna, uh, be able to go to the beach and take my wife and beat her off. That's, that's my goal. Bleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so uh, um, Jock was in here Monday. Mm-hmm. And he said, if, I said, anything you want to ask Joe Kelly? He says, mm-hmm. I want to challenge him to a weight loss. Let's go. Let's go. So man. do you want to get on a scale? Yeah. And yeah. we're keeping the numbers private right yeah. now. Yeah. And yeah. as a matter of fact, I got the, I've got the scale set on kilograms. Yeah, yeah. Right, so, right, right. So... If you want to get on the scale, yeah, I'll take yeah. the note, and then yeah. we'll go like six months, six months, nine yeah, months. Yes, yeah, do a six month. Six you want months. to do? Uh, is there something to pay a payday at the end of the road? A dinner or a, uh, yeah, a McAllen or? Yeah, I don't. I don't know if Jock drinks or you know a, a dinner or you know. We'll figure that part. Yeah, out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. All right. Well, let's get you real quick. I got the scale right here. <laughs> Rocks in my pocket. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. That's why we don't put yeah. it on. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that's between us. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. That's birthday meal. Uh, birthday meal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no donut. Uh, biggest celebrity you've ever met? Denzel Washington. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, um, I don't know if, well, I don't think James Mitchell. Uh, we called him Big Mitch. He was he was on uh, he was here, but I think he might might have no Mitch was on the team, our Orange Bowl team. I don't remember. James that. Mitch, he was walk on walk on guy from New York. What position? Uh, D line. Okay. So Big Mitch uh, from New York. Um, Are you sure he was in the Orange Bowl? I think yeah, he was on our yeah he was on our team. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, uh, practice squad guy, uh, funny mm-hmm. funny guy. But he actually based in New York. So when I um, I got traded up to uh, the Jets. I was playing up there, and uh, he was actually working on the set of Malcolm X uh, when Denzel was making it. So uh, mm-hmm. he invited, you know, invited us to uh, the set, and you know, actually had to, you know, an opportunity to go in his dressing room, you know, between you know takes and sit there, and you know, he's just talking about how much he admired, you know, uh, football players and. Um, you know, my, my wife at the time, we're sitting there and, you know, I was Denzel Washington and I'm like, you know, man, I had great meeting you and, and she's over there. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm hitting her. You like, might get ready to speak. <laughs> you know, you know, and, and, you know, but he was just laid back, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we were, we were on the set. Uh, we stayed, we, we went like three days in a row, you know, so that was just meeting him was the coolest. How about the best live music performance? The best live music performance, Prince, man, Prince. Where? I've seen Where Prince, and when? I've, I've seen Prince uh, in Cincinnati, uh, and uh, we had uh, front row seats, and uh, I think you know Prince was probably as tall as his table, uh, but he had I don't know twelve inch heels. I missed. What year did you say? This was this was uh, I want to say I was in Cincinnati. For your first eleven. Yeah, uh, it was early 2000s, I think. Yeah. Uh, you know, but just seeing him, just how talented, you know. Yeah, great seats. Yeah, awesome seats. Yeah. Front row. Yeah, he was just, you know, just musician. He was a musician. Right. You know, just talented and just his, his collection of, of music, you know, is, is on par with, you know, Michael Jackson, everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, he has a collection of music that's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So. Um, Icky Woods. So, if you don't mind me prefacing this, yeah. <laughs> so Joe had a, a bachelor party yeah. in Pioneer Square, a couple yeah. blocks away. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, I'm going to Joe's bachelor party, and yeah. I was the only Caucasian, not at the bachelor party, but in the bar, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was sit- sitting at the bar, and um, everybody's dancing, and everything's good. Yeah. And there's a gal two or three seats down, and. Uh, 
she looks at me and I look at her and I said, do you want to dance? And mm -hmm. she says, sure. And I, I consider myself a pretty good dancer. Just keep your feet close to the floor, right? right? Once you start picking up your feet, right, you're, right. Done. <laughs> you're done. Right, you're done. You're, yeah. that, you're yeah. that guy that can't dance. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so we're on the dance floor and um, Icky Woods, who, how tall is he? Came up like... Icky's it, it, six, six, was he? six, one and a half. He didn't seem yeah. too intimidating, but he, yeah. he came up and got in my face and said, yeah. don't you ever, you know, dance with my wife yeah. again. Yeah. And I didn't do anything disrespectful, and yeah. we had our distance. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to dance. Yeah. And so I go back to the bar and a couple more double whatever <laughs> liquid courage. Yeah. And I'm thinking, God, that guy was kind of rude, you know? Mm -hmm. And I look down, and boy, there's his wife again, and she looks at me, and I said, you know, fuck, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> so we go back on the dance floor, and it's a respectable yeah. distance between the two of us. And... Um, Rod Jones comes up behind Icky's wife, and he does a bear hug. So he, he, he grabs her from behind, and he's got me. Mm -hmm. He's got the seven-foot wingspan, right, so he's right, got the right. three of us. Yeah, yeah. Icky's wife's in the middle, and he's, <laughs> he's rocking. Yeah. I'm try I can't get away. <laughs> Rod, big Rod. <laughs> here comes Icky. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. It was on. Yeah. And I think yeah. I think Joe saved me and Vince yeah. Albritton. Yeah, yeah, you know. He was, but I had to leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they saved me, but I had to leave the premises. Yeah, he's uh, he's a good dude. Yeah. A, I'm actually I'm actually president of his foundation. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah. What's it called? Uh, the Javante Woods Foundation. Uh, for people that don't know, his uh, his son Javante, uh, his junior year in high school. Um, you know, he was getting recruited by all Big Ten schools, football, you know, ran track, uh, but football was primarily sport, and he um, had asthma, and um, uh, after uh, one of the two-day two -day practices, he was, he, would, he was the kind of kid that jogged home, you know, between practices to mm -hmm. stay in shape, and he jogged home, and uh, uh, his, his younger brother, Aubrey, was the only one there, and uh, he was having, started having an asthma attack, and had his inhaler, but it was out. Mm -hmm. So he went to use the inhaler. It was out, and uh, Aubrey called. We were playing golf, uh, and Aubrey called Icky and said, um, uh, you know, uh, Devontae's having a, an asthma attack. So their friend next door had asthma as well. So he just told him, well, here, go borrow this kid's thing. So he goes out, he goes out of uh, the building, and... So this kind of sitting there, um, we're not we're not thinking, mm -hmm. you know, nothing. And uh, it's like, well, I'm gonna go. Let me go check it out. And um, he told Aubrey. He called him maybe about ten minutes later. Go check on him, you know. So he opens the door, and he was right there. So he never even made it to the friend's house, um, you know, to go get it and uh, called the ambulance. And uh, by the time the ambulance came, he had he had been with, without oxygen. I don't know, 20 minutes, you know, and, 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 you know, they rushed him to the hospital. And, you know, the great thing about it, you know, we had, you know, all of our teammates, you know, Chris Collinsworth, you know, Chris Collinsworth, we were roommates. Um, Anthony Moore, everybody was there at the hospital. Uh, and, you know, he was there for uh, three days on the, on the ventilator. Uh, and uh, they didn't have any brain activity and probably obviously probably one of the hardest things I ever did he asked me to go in with his family you know his, his wife and you mm -hmm. know uh, uh, go into the room they're going to pull the plug and just to see if he can you know that was the only way to see if we're going you know he's going to survive and uh, going in there I would say that one of that was one of the hardest things I ever did in my life to to be able to hold it because he they took him off the ventilator um, and they, they gave him 20 minutes so you imagine, and I'm looking at this kid, physical specimen, you know. Looks fine. Um, yeah, you know, everything looks fine, but no brain activity. So they take him off and then, you know, everybody's praying and all that stuff and, you know, praying and crying. And I'm, you know, I'm holding him trying to, because I can't, because I got it. And then, you know, you hear, uh, you hear, uh, you see the, the, the monitor, heart monitor, mm -hmm. beep, beep. You know, so you get that rush like, and then it just went, beep. And, you know, that was it. And they just, you know, of course, you know, it fell out and hugged him and kissed him. And, you know, I had to keep it together. 
You know, that was, What's that the name of the tough. foundation? It's called the Javante Woods uh, Foundation, uh, and um, you know, donated you know over two hundred thousand dollars to Children's Hospital of Cincinnati. Uh, you know, when he died, he donated uh, six of his organs. Uh, so you know, it's, it's part of you know organ donation, um, but just asthma awareness and and what people don't know, uh, asthma is one of the number one killer in the African American community uh, with you know, African American youth asthma. And nobody thinks asthma as as being a killer. A killer, you know, it's asthma. You, think, you know, it's 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 one of the number one causes of death uh, in the African American community. So you know, just go out and you know uh, raise awareness for for asthma. And you know, we have uh, two um, two uh, golf tournaments. Have a golf tournament, matter of fact, Monday okay. uh, in Cincinnati. Then we'll have one the following Monday in Dayton, Ohio. So, so you're on the board? You're I'm the president. the president of that. Yeah. You run mm -hmm. Kelly Youth Services. Kelly Youth Services. Yeah, uh,